from WFSB, Connecticut's number one local news. This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News this morning. It is 6 o'clock. It is Wednesday morning, and we begin with an early warning weather alert Ooh. once again. Nothing alarming about this picture. It is a beautiful start as we look over Hartford. What it's hard to see from this angle is how hot it is. We're in the middle of our fifth heat wave of the year as we look down from our iCam over Hartford. Good morning. Thank you for waking up with Eyewitness News. We are on your televisions, of course, but also live on our streaming news app. I'm Eric Parker. And I'm Nicole Nalepa. And that was just a little slice of heaven we showed you in that camera. But uh, it's going to feel anything but heaven today. <laughs> I know I what you were going to say. One. I know what you were going to say. I didn't even say. plan on going there either. <laughs> wow. H-E double toothpicks is oh, what geez. you almost said. Uh, Six o'clock straight up. Let's take you outside right now. <laughs> there morning. is nothing better than realizing the train is off the tracks but being unable to stop it. Exactly. It just goes choo-choo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take you out right now. Our Tom Plus scanning the state dry high. Everybody, good morning. Uh, we're taking a look at mostly. Uh, <laughs> really? I know you did. not That's the most innocent part about the whole thing. It's wonderful. <laughs> Our Channel 3 early warning dual pole radar scanning the state dry. We did have some showers that passed through in the overnight, even some lightning and thunder. Uh, now we've got this heat advisory. It's day three of the heat advisory that is in effect through this evening. It should get canceled by tomorrow, which is good news or later on this evening. Uh, it's going to be another scorcher. But there's also an air quality alert in effect for northern Fairfield and northern Middlesex County. So for those in the very sensitive groups, the very young, the very old, those with respiratory problems, you want to seek the air conditioning during the day today. All right. As Eric just mentioned, we are in our fifth heat wave of 2020. Yesterday, it got to a sweltering 95 degrees. Boy, was it humid yesterday. It felt like 100 degrees in parts of the state. We're up to 33 days of 90 degree heat thus far this year. 17 is the annual average. So if you double 17, you get 34, one away from doubling that average annual. Uh, and record 38 days. We're getting closer to that 38 days it set back in 1983. Last year, 27. This year, 33. All right, the temperature's out there, 74 at uh, Connecticut Science Center, 76. I mean, we should be in 62 in this column. We're nowhere near it. Let's take a look at Ocean Beach. We should start to see the sun coming up there. It's going to be an okay day at the beach today, but if you see lightning or hear thunder a little bit later on this afternoon, you want to make sure you have a safe haven to get to because we are expecting some scattered showers and storms to roll through. Temperatures today, 91 for Bradley. If we do get to 91, it'll be day five of our fifth heat wave. We'll keep you posted. 602 is now the time. Caitlin Francis, good morning to you. And good morning to you, Scott Haney. Good morning, everybody. You're getting ready to head out the door for your morning commute. Might want to pack that umbrella just in case you might run into some wet spots across the state. We're also dealing with a little bit of road work, so reduce those speeds, that's for sure. We're also dealing with just a couple of those localized road closures still this morning. Most of those have cleared, which is some great news, but in Weston, Route 57, that's Georgetown Road, is closed between Samuelson Road and Whipperwill Lane. In Winchester, Route 263 near Blue Street is still closed as well. Let's take you outside. We're off to a nice start in Hartford, 91. This is uh, right going into the capital city. You can see traffic's moving along very nicely, and it's dry there. Same story here, 84. We saw, oh, goodness, I pressed a button. I'm so sorry. Um, but anyway, that was the lower deck of the Mixed Master. Things are looking good. And then I'll leave you with a look outside here in 95 by Long Hill Road in Groton. I'm Caitlin Francis with your Connecticut Chevy Pinpoint Traffic Report, driven by your Connecticut Chevy dealers. All right, thanks, Caitlin. Eight days after Tropical Storm Isaias made its way to Connecticut, power has been restored to a majority of homes and businesses in our state. Eversource reports crews have now restored electricity to more than 99% of customers, but state leaders still say the company's response to Isaias was poorly planned and ineffective. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Roger Suzanne is live outside Eversource's headquarters in Berlin with the latest on this. Good morning, Roger. Good morning, Nicole and Eric. You know, Eversource officials admit they were somewhat blindsided by the sheer scope of the damage from last week's storm. At the peak, more than 600,000 people lost their power. Truly incredible. But critics say the reason that those numbers were so high, at least in part, was that Eversource was simply not prepared. And they claim that now the company must pay a very heavy price.